Hello everyone, my name is Catalyst, welcome back to the channel, I hope you all are doing well. For today's video, we will be discussing the best weapons to use in Battlefield 2042. I was going to make this video once the Season 1 content dropped and we got some new weapons to work with, but now that the first season content has been confirmed to not be coming until March of this year and not January as previously believed, I think it's best that we make a video now that can stand up on its own for a little while until balance changes and new weapons come a few months down the road. So today I'll list what I consider to be the top 5 weapons in the game with a few honorable mentions and attempt to explain why I think they deserve such recognition and what attachments work best on these weapons. Again, this is all my opinion, and at the end of the day, you should use what best fits your playstyle and what you enjoy the most. Unfortunately, weapon-specific stats are unavailable until Simthic is up and running, or if they even plan on doing weapon stats for 2042, and if you're unfamiliar with Simthic, they charted weapon statistics to the insane detail, and that's where most of us get our weapon-specific stats. So, this video is unfortunately going to have a lot of generalities, but I will do my best to convey why weapons are good and why you should use them. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get to work. First, let's go through some honorable mentions, the first of which being the K-30. The K-30 is one of the strongest weapons in the game in terms of how much DPS it can crank out. It's your stereotypical super cheesy bullet hose like the Type 2A or the CZ that a lot of people hate because of the rate of fire and how spammable it is, but it's not really the best all-around weapon. Now, the reason that the K-30 is only an honorable mention is that it isn't very flexible in terms of how you can use it in comparison to some other games on the market. The only real way to use the K-30 in Battlefield 2042 is with an extended mag or drum magazine, and it takes a little while to unlock it before you can actually use those attachments. And it only serves one playstyle, which, if it suits you, then that's great, but this game can really punish aggression, which is what you need in order to use the K-30 effectively. So, in other words, it can be really good, it certainly has the DPS to be really good, but it's bottlenecked by the gameplay loop and the fact that you can only really use it in one way. I would recommend using a drum magazine, a red dot sight, and a muzzle brake to reduce that recoil. The second honorable mention goes to the M5A3. Now I know what some of you are thinking, Catalyst, this is a really good gun, why is it just an honorable mention? Well, you're right, the M5A3 is a very versatile weapon that can cater to a bunch of different playstyles and is probably my most used weapon in 2042. In fact, I think it's one of the two guns I actually have tier 1 on in the game, but with that all being said, a big part of the reason why the M5A3 is so good is due to one attachment, and that is the shortened barrel attachment. This attachment increases your rate of fire on the M5, and in combination with close combat rounds, you have an assault rifle that can surpass most of the SMGs in the game if the player is skilled enough. But that's because the shortened barrel is actually bugged in its current state as an attachment, and it has to do with the weapon spread while the short barrel is equipped. Currently, you get the rate of fire increase that you have when you equip the shortened barrel, but you keep the spread of the base weapon instead of getting increased spread like you are supposed to. That's why when you get killed by the M5 in public lobbies, it can sometimes feel really, really quick. Now, even without the shortened barrel, I really enjoy the M5A3, and I think it's a good weapon. I just don't know if I would rate it it higher without the shortened barrel bug, which is why I just made an outlier in this video. My M5 build is a red dot sight with a shortened barrel, extended mag, and or close combat rounds with no underbarrel or a laser sight. Moving on to the proper list now, first we have the AK-24. The AK was pretty disastrous at launch if you all can remember, but once the spread and hit registration fixes were implemented, this gun really got some much needed help. Right now, I think the AK is the best full auto assault rifle in the game and it offers a lot of versatility, similar to the M5A3. But the reason I enjoy the AK so much is because I love how the recoil feels on the gun and I think that the AK has one of the nicest looking red dot sight pictures in the entire game, so it's very easy to aim with. It's really easy to see where your bullets are going, and it feels very comfortable for me to ride the recoil up into headshots. I don't find the recoil on the weapon to be too challenging, and I like the slight feeling of 
floatiness that comes with it sometimes. Normally the word floaty isn't really used in a positive light when talking about recoil in first person shooter games, but for whatever reason I feel extremely comfortable with the AK. It's a versatile assault rifle with readable recoil and a powerful damage model being a 5 shot kill up to 50 meters. On my AK-24 I run a red dot sight, rattlesnake grip for better accuracy while strafing, a tactical muzzle brake to mitigate as much vertical recoil as possible, and the drum magazine. Next, we have the AC-42, the only burst rifle in Battlefield 2042 if you exclude the burst fire function on the G57 pistol. Automatically, if you are a fan of burst rifles, you probably love this thing, but if you aren't a fan of burst rifles, you should still consider running the AC-42 because this rifle is a one-frame machine, especially if you're on console because using a controller gives you 30% less recoil. Yes, you heard that right, if you use a controller input, you have 30% less recoil on all weapons. That's not me being a salty PC player, that's really in the game files, so you can get deadly accurate with the AC-42. I don't know if I've ever received so many one-frame deaths at the hand of an assault rifle before, and that's because this weapon is absolutely deadly if you hit headshots with it. With the extended barrel, I think you can kill enemies with two headshots up to 50 meters. I would quite honestly not be surprised if that specific attachment gets the nerf hammer for this weapon. For my money, the AC-42 is the best long-range rifle in the game and is certainly a great counter-sniping weapon. I would actually run the AC-42 over the SVK and DMR-7 for that matter at this point with how strong it is in its current state. But of course, its one big weakness is close range where it gets beat out by most SMGs. You definitely want to take your time to line up shots with the AC-42 if possible so you can get the maximum killing potential. For my AC-42 loadout, I run the extended barrel for that disgusting one burst headshot range, and it doesn't have that much rate of fire penalty by the way. I also run it without an underbarrel attachment and an extended mag with a red dot sight or an ACOG sight. Next on the list there is the MP9. I really enjoy the MP9 as it's the bridge between the PBX and the K30, and the middle ground that it sits in really makes it quite strong and enjoyable to use. It's got a fast rate of fire, but not fast enough to where you need to run an extended mag and ammo crate to make it effective, and it has fairly manageable recoil in comparison to the K30 that really kicks. For me, the MP9 is the perfect flanking weapon in Battlefield 2042 and should be played as such. It's a great weapon that offers you excellent excellent close quarters efficiency and you can kill a lot of enemies very quickly if you get behind them. Since you won't be reloading as often as you would be with the K30 for example, it's much easier to sustain those flanks and keep yourself in fights. The MP9 is just a very dependable weapon in that regard. I would 100% run a suppressor on the MP9 if you want to run it in the flanking fashion that I suggest you do. You only lose about 10% damage at all ranges and you get that damage drop off for the first 10 meters with the suppressor equipped. which which isn't too bad considering how fast the rate of fire is. And of course, the big plus is that you stay off the minimap, which is crucial in 2042 where you're pretty much constantly spotted already. I would suggest running a drum magazine on the MP9 with a red dot sight, a heavy suppressor, and a laser sight. Keep in mind that you do need to toggle the laser sight on every single life if you want to get the benefits from it. Runner up to the number one spot is the PP29. Now the PP29 was the best gun in the game at launch, bar none, and that was mostly due to the fact that it was the only gun that felt like it was registering hits correctly. People called for a nerf and it was hit decently hard, but I still think that the PP29 is one of the best weapons in the game once you get a hold of its recoil. The PP29 is essentially a better AK-24 in an SMG's body, so you get the benefit of using an SMG but with the power of the AK. The PP29 has a two-shot headshot range of 30 meters. Yeah, you can headshot someone twice up to 30 meters away and kill them, and you don't even have to use the high power rounds to do that. That's insane to do with an SMG, not to mention that you can have 65 rounds in the standard magazine and no fewer than 50 in every single other ammo type. So the PP29 has insane range, a lot of ammo, and is really effective if you get over the weapon's initial jump and recoil. Not to mention that the gun has for my money the best iron sights in the game and looks clean with a red dot sight. I seriously love the PP.
The only reason you would use the AK-24 over the PP-29 is its lesser recoil and more versatility in weapon attachments, but for the PP-29, I would suggest a red dot sight, the high-powered rounds, and a muzzle brake to neutralize vertical recoil. Last but certainly not least, we come to the PKP. Big surprise, I know, but this weapon looks at the term weapon balancing and laughs at it, and I 100% believe that this weapon will get nerfed when DICE comes back from their prolonged vacation. The PKP has 200 rounds, little to no recoil, and a rate of fire of 800 to 850 rounds per minute, depending on the ammo type that you use. That competes or outperforms every SMG and assault rifle in the game apart from the K30. Quite literally, the only negative with a PKP is that there is a sprint to fire delay of about a second when you are tactical sprinting. So if you take the time to pre-aim during your gunfights, you will probably not lose that gunfight unless you just plain blow it. Now, I'm probably not telling you something that you don't already know considering how many PKPs I get killed by in-game. It's not exactly a secret how good this weapon is, but just in case you're late to the party, this gun has basically no downsides right now, and there is no reason for you not to use it. On my PKP, I run the K8 hollow sight with the high power extended mag rounds and a muzzle break. And that's the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed your time here. If you enjoyed it, drop a like and leave a comment if you made it to the end of the video. What's your favorite weapon to use in Battlefield 2042? If you enjoyed it just that much, you should consider subscribing as I will be making tons of 2042 content like this one moving forward. I stream four nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday on my Twitch at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Catalyst and I will see you all another time.